Tonight on EKB Evening News at 6, a widow accuses Eric C. Kahn of causing her husband's death. Good evening, I'm Cindy Mae Johnson. The continuing legal saga surrounding a Stanville attorney took a different turn today. Over the past couple of weeks, Eric C. Kahn has been accused of fraud by the Social Security Administration and slapped with a class action malpractice lawsuit filed on behalf of former clients whose disability benefits were briefly suspended. Today, attorneys for Emma Burchett filed suit against Kahn. The complaint alleges that Kahn's actions led to the suspensions, which in turn set in motion a series of events that ended with Leroy Burchett's suicide. Prestonsburg attorney Ned Pillersdorf and Pikeville attorney Noah Friend, who represent Burchett, say after he received his suspension letter, Leroy Burchett stopped taking his medications, including antidepressants, and sank into depression, which ended with his death. Friend told EKB News, Khan must be held accountable. The way the law, the law works is it says when you do something that foreseeably uh, leads to the injury or death of someone, you can be held responsible. Uh, people rely on their attorneys, especially in cases like Social Security, to practice these cases professionally and properly because these benefits are absolutely essential to people's uh, everyday lives. Mr. Khan practiced these cases so poorly and committed this fraud uh, that he should have known that this sort of thing would happen. When the, when the uh, benefits were suspended for Mr. Burchett, uh, it, it led to a lot of distress and problems for him and he ended up committing suicide. And Mr. Khan has got to be held responsible for that because he should have known that the way he practiced these cases that this was going to happen. EKB News reached out to Khan's office today seeking comment. We did not receive an answer prior to this newscast. In addition to his wife, Leroy Burchett left behind three minor children. Yesterday, EKB News reporter Shannon Deskins reported on the continuing sewage spill from Grundy and efforts to monitor the situation both at Fish Trap Lake and upstream. Today, Shannon spoke with officials in Pikeville to see what effect, if any, the spill is having in that community. She filed this report. In the past few weeks, a lot of attention has been given to the massive sewage spill in Buchanan County, Virginia. But for the most part, the focus has been on Fish Trap Lake and the river that feeds into it. But there are several communities that rely on the Leviza Fork of the Big Sandy River below the Fish Trap Dam spillway. For instance, the water supply for the city of Pikeville comes from that river. But officials with UMG in Pikeville told us that there has been absolutely no change in the hundreds of water samples they have taken since the spill began. Well, with the water plant, like I said, we sample 25, about 25 uh, samples per day, and we haven't seen any change in anything so far. And that is great news, especially for tourism in the city, as many people spend time on the river during the summer months. Sean Cochran told us that they haven't seen that anyone is shying away from the river this summer. If anything, we've, we've seen an uptick, you know, especially since school let out. Um, this past weekend was one of the busiest weekends that we'd had on the river uh, with kayaking rentals. And then also there was, a, uh, there was a large group of kayaks that went through that were privately owned. Uh, very large group this, this weekend. So no, we're, we're not seeing any, um, any effects from it really at all. In addition to tubing and kayaking for fun, many anglers flock to Pikeville to fish the river designated as a blue water trail by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. A blue water trail means that it's been recognized by Kentucky Fish and Wildlife and three years ago Kentucky Fish and Wildlife actually did come in and do testing and they look for a number of things, flora and fauna, access to and from the river, um, you know, how well the fishery is. All those factors figure into becoming a blue water trail. At the time we were only the 14th I think in the state to be certified as a blue water trail. So, you know, it's, I, I personally went fishing two weeks ago and caught 17 inch smallmouth on this stretch of river. So, no, we, we haven't really seen any effects from this whatsoever. For EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Shannon Deskins. The former general manager of the Mountain Laurel Mining Complex has been sentenced to 41 months in jail and $15,000 for extortion and tax evasion related to an elaborate seven-year kickback scheme. 45-year-old David E. Runyon of Del Barton was sentenced by U.S. District Judge Thomas E. Johnston. Runyon admitted he and other Arch Coal employees received $1.8 million from vendors over a seven-year period in exchange for continued business. 
In addition to the sentence, Runyon will be required to pay $1 million in restitution to Arch Cole and more than $325,000 to the IRS. Three administrators of a defunct nursing facility pleaded guilty Friday and Monday to a single charge of racketeering. According to the indictment, Bryan Center of Weber City owner Avi Klein, Regional Vice President Alicia Dietrich, and Bryan Center Administrator Vicki Cox concocted a wide-ranging scheme to defraud patients, employees, vendors, and the Medicare and Medicaid programs. Tactics included not providing adequate care, deducting premiums from paychecks without enrolling workers in insurance, withholding bill payments, and billing for services not provided. Under the terms of Klein's plea agreement, he won't face any jail time, but will be required to pay a $250,000 fine, $419,000 in restitution, and $872,000 for the costs of the investigation. Dietrich and Cox will not face any fines or restitution, but the government will seek incarceration of between 1 and 27 months. Klein and Cox will be sentenced August 24th. Dietrich will be sentenced September 2nd. Coming up, the Pikeville Farmers Market is holding their grand opening this weekend. And Pike County Relay for Life hosted a very special event last night. We'll be back to tell you about it in two minutes. During all of this month's Relay for Life events, the focus is usually on having fun and raising money for cancer research. Last night, EKB News reporter Courtney Lovern attended an event where the emphasis was on the end goal for all of those stricken with cancer. Let us join together in celebrating those survivors who are here with us, remember those that have lost the battle, and fight back against this disease that has affected us all. Last night, the Relay for Life Survivors Dinner was held at the East Kentucky Expo Center to honor all of those who have beaten cancer. It was a free dinner and volunteers assisted with handing out the turkey dinners to the survivors. It was a night of celebration and remembrance for all those who have fought this battle. Debbie Freeman was the hostess of the evening and talked about the benefit of this event. This is a really great event to um, celebrate their victory. Treatment's so hard, uh, it's mentally and physically hard. So this just gives them a fun night to come out and celebrate the fact that they're winning. The dinner was open to all survivors and the theme this year was centered around the 1950s. One of the survivors in the crowd was Ross Dameron, an 84-year-old man that is a 64-year survivor of six different types of cancer and he shared his story. My cancer story started in the 19. 48 when I was in the Air Force uh, we was guarding some chemicals yeah, and I believe my cancer developed from that uh, it was a cancer of the thyroid gland that uh, I just enjoy life I play guitar play bluegrass guitar and uh, I just enjoyed this supper and banquet every year so much, and this is a, a good thing a lot of people do. The crowd consisted not only of survivors who have beaten cancer, but of current cancer patients that are still undergoing treatment. If anyone missed the dinner, there is another event they can attend on Friday. The uh, Relay for Life walk is Friday night up at Bob Amos Park, so if um, patient, you know, if survivors didn't get to come, We'll have a survivor tent up there that will be the 50s theme as well. And we'll have free food and fun. We try to carry that on over into uh, the week. So if you didn't get to come here tonight, try to come by the tent and, and join in on the fun. Reporting for EKB Evening News at 6, I'm Courtney Lever. This Saturday marks the 2015 grand opening for the Pikeville Farmers Market at the Pike County Cooperative Extension Office. While it's still early in the growing season, Saturday's market will include local meats, honey, produce, and farm fresh eggs. Some specialty items like jams, roasted duds, and pimento cheese will also be available. Local artists will be on hand with their wares. Other events include face painting and a cooking demonstration. Vendor Charlie Pinson says because the market depends on local growers, patrons will find different items for sale at different times of the year. 
as a farmer here in eastern Kentucky, there is a season to everything. The early season in the spring will be like cabbages, uh, broccoli, lettuce, greens, onions, and then it'll move into a few weeks after that, you'll get like your zucchinis, you'll get your uh, tomatoes, and corn will come in somewhere in July. You know, hopefully the by the 4th of July, we'll have our first corn, and then later on, you'll have melons, and, and then you'll have in the winter, fall months, you'll have like water, or watermelons, you'll have uh, Cushaws, you'll have pumpkins, you'll have different kinds of squash and things, and then again it'll turn around again. You go back to the cool crops, which will, or cold crops is what they're called. You go back to broccoli, cabbage, lettuce, and like kale, mustard, turnips. You'll, so everything kind of goes in the season, and the seasons really depend on the temperature and the the humidity in the air. The like the cold crops, the cabbages, the lettuces, the the broccoli, those kind of things. They've got to have that cool nights. The market is officially open Saturdays from 9 until 1 and Tuesday evenings from 4.30 till 7 through at least October. If you'd like to know what's featured every day or take a look behind the scenes, visit the Pikeville Farmers Market Facebook page. During the month of June, the Commonwealth of Virginia is observing Move Over Awareness Month. The observance is intended to alert drivers to the need to slow down and move into another lane when you see police, fire, highway workers, and tow trucks on the side of the road. The awareness campaign is intended to improve safety for emergency responders and highway workers. According to the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial Fund, since 2005, 123 police officers have been killed as a result of being struck by vehicles. Coming up, a Mingo Central basketball player signed a national letter of intent today. Andrew Joyce will tell us where he's going. But first, let's check in with the weather, and EKB Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins has all that. We'll be back to do it in two minutes. It's been a hot, hot day today. A little on the toasty side. Mm -hmm. We had temperatures today, upper 80s, did not hit a record today. I well, thought we were going to do it. It was so close, but uh, we have another shot during the day tomorrow. Doppler radar, another thing that we've not had to worry about today, any kind of showers. And those showers have been uh, either far to the south or far to the west, but nothing here across our region. I want to point out a couple of things here on the satellite and radar composite. If you've been out, you've noticed that it looks like we have cloud cover, but it's really not the clouds that you're seeing out there. We actually have smoke across our region. If you look closely right in through here, you'll see the hazy skies. That is smoke from a forest fire that is ongoing in Canada. And it has just been cruising right across the Ohio Valley and now moving off, you can see, right off the east coast of the U.S. So, while wow, it looks like we have some cloud cover, it is not the case, but it will make for a pretty nice sunset tonight. We should see some colors of orange and red as opposed to what we normally see. So get out there and check that out this evening. As far as temperatures are concerned, a lot of red on the map. 85 in Pikeville, 86 Prestonsburg, 86 in Paintsville, 80 right now in Dorton, 83 Whitesburg, and 85 in both West Liberty and in Sawyersville. Temperatures tonight, we drop back into the mid and upper 60s. It's going to be a pretty muggy night. Just wait till tomorrow because the forecast highs are back in the upper 80s. And you see some of the shading of uh, the purple there. That's uh, temperatures flirting with, if not exceeding, 90 degrees. And I think around 90, 91 will be the forecast high for tomorrow. Once you add the humidity in with that, it's going to be a little more uncomfortable tomorrow as well. So that is what we have to look forward to. What are we talking about? Well, it was so popular yesterday. We had to throw it in there again today. The muggy meter, yes. Yesterday it was right in between the noticeable category and the uncomfortable category. Well, tomorrow, we're just going all out uncomfortable. The dew points will be up. That means the humidity will also be up and that will make for an uncomfortable day. Now, if you have to be out and about, maybe you're going to take a trip to the swimming pool with the UV forecast very high. You could have a sunburn in a matter of about 15 minutes. So reduce your time outdoors, especially between the hours of 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock. Stay in the shade. Wear the uh, SPF as well, around 30 SPF is what you need as far as the sunscreen is concerned. All right, that pollen count for tomorrow, back to 6.2 out of a possible 12 in the moderate category, back to near eight as we head into the day on Friday. And with the humidity levels returning on Saturday, we go back down 
into the moderate category at 6.5. Seven day forecast time. Tomorrow still, I think we'll be on the dry side, 90 degrees, but that daily threat of showers and thunderstorms during the afternoon and evening hours that will return Friday, Saturday, Sunday, even into early to middle parts of next week. Each and every day temperatures in the mid to upper 80s. No relief as far as the heat is concerned. Summer is here, not officially, but it's going to feel like it. Oh, I call it summer now. It's okay. Well, June 1st, I think, is when you, is when you officially right say then. summer is it's here. But now we've got Relay for Life in Pike County. We do. Friday night. Mm -hmm. Got to keep those showers off for that. Mainly in the afternoon. Once we get to the evening hours, we usually see those showers die down. So that's typically what we see as far as that's concerned. I think the relay is about six o'clock that yes. evening. So hopefully we'll be okay. All right. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Lathan. We're going to be back with sports in just two minutes. Stay with us. Andrew, I know a personal hero of yours from yes. what the 70s you got it. had uh, a record fall. Well, tied at least. Okay, tied. Yeah, so it's all still good. You're okay. Now I've got two heroes. All right, that's good. Last night, the, the Reds and Phillies at Great American Ballpark and history was made. Cincinnati Hall of Famer Johnny Bench had three home run games in his career. He was all alone with that record until last night in the Reds 11 2 win over the Phillies. Add Joey Votto to the short list of three homer games. Votto with his first and the third, a 412 foot shot to center field. In the fifth, this one 395 feet, it just clears the rail. And finally in the seventh, Votto goes deep to right center field. This one, a 380 foot home run. Votto three home runs, now tied with that, with Johnny Bench for that record. Then this afternoon, the Reds and Phillies in the series wrap up. Cincinnati was looking to sweep. This one was loaded with excitement. A three run homer, a four for four day, and a rookie's first win. It was not a good day for Red shortstop Zach Cozart. He was injured trying to beat out this throw at first. He left the game with a knee injury and We'll have more details tomorrow after examination. Brian Pena had a much better day. Here's one of his four hits. Four for four on the day for Pena. Yvonne De Jesus comes to the plate. He jacks a three run homer to left. And the Reds will go on to knock off the Phillies after Araldis Chapman comes on in the ninth. He'll get this final out for his 12th save of the year. Reds win 5-2 for the series sweep. Pena 4-4, four for four, Yvonne De Jesus with the three-run homer, and rookie starter John Moscott's first career win on the mound. Reds win 5-2 for the sweep and will go on to face the Cubs. That's coming up tomorrow, the first of a four-game series. Cincinnati will take on their National League Central rival beginning Thursday. And the Kentucky High School Baseball All-State selections were released today. Around the area, selected third-team All-State was Johnson Central's Jordan Blanton and Paintsville's Matt Miller. In softball, All-State starting with first team from Single A, Caitlin Estevez from Jenkins, Jazzy Howard and Laley Burchill from McGoffin County. Second team Single A All-State selection was Melissa Bartley from Jenkins and Sydney Jones from Shelby Valley. Also an honorable mention from single A is Whitney Creech. In double A, second team All-State softball, Ra Rochelle Fairchild from Johnson Central. And in basketball news, Mingo Central's Dikembe Dixon signed a national letter of intent today, solidifying his college choice. Dixon averaged 22 points, 11 rebounds, five blocks, and three steals per game last season. Out of a number of schools, including Division I, SEC schools, and local schools, Dikembe Dixon decided this decision was the best for him. Well, I'm going to UIC, which is University of Illinois, Chicago. I mean, I'm happy with the decision. At first, I wasn't. <laughs> the school is great. I talked to everyone. They all act like they wanted to have me there. So I feel like I'll be a great fit there. 
because um, they actually was telling me stuff that I want to do and help me reach my goals, and I don't feel like the other schools were going to do that. Plus, I want to play as a freshman. All the other schools are saying, wait till my sophomore year. Dixon made his decision by weighing playing time options and finding a good fit for him and his family. Yeah, at first I didn't think, I thought that I should have went high major. I mean, I had high major schools, but uh, me and my dad talked about it. He said, if you went to the high major, you might not get as much playing time as you would as a lower major. So we came to the conclusion that I need to go there. For EKB, evening news at 6, I'm Michaela Colley. Thanks, Michaela. Division One, the University of Illinois at Chicago is coached by former Indiana assistant Steve McLean. UIC is a member of the Horizon League. And it was recently announced that Johnson Central basketball star Braxton Blair has committed to play with Alice Lloyd College. Blair averaged 15.4 points, 4.9 assists, 5 rebounds, and 2 steals a game. Blair helped lead the Eagles to their fourth straight regional championship and was named All-Tournament MVP from the 15th region. Good luck, Braxton. And in Game 3 of the NBA Finals, the Cavaliers put on a show to hold off the Warriors. Cleveland jumped out to a 20-point third-quarter lead and had to fight off a late Golden State rally for the 96-91 win. The Cavaliers were led by LeBron James 40 points and a surprising 20 from Matthew Della Vadova to take two games to one lead in the best of seven series. Game four Thursday night in Cleveland. Thanks, Andrew. I heard LeBron James came up on the Daybreak Morning Show this morning, too. King James. Yeah. Of course. Heard a little talk about that this morning. Is it because that's easier to talk about than Della Vendova? What? Yeah, we okay. try to keep it to a syllable or two. Good idea. Della Vendova. I won't even try. Some call him Deli. That's even easier. easier. I like it. We'll be back in just two minutes. Stay tuned. Now, for fair-skinned people like me, we've got an SPF warning coming up <laughs> pretty soon, indeed, right? You do indeed, especially tomorrow. That UV index about 10 out of a possible 11, about as high as you can go. 90 degrees for tomorrow, 89 on Friday. And we stay in the mid and upper 80s each and every day through the weekend and early next week with that daily threat of an afternoon shower or storm. For me, it means sunscreen and a hat. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, Lathan. And tonight, we've got more good classic music coming up. I love classic music, and uh, Ted Meadows does it right with Full Throttle Video, a brand new edition tonight at 7. Sounds like a not-to-be-missed event. That's going to do it for us tonight on EKB Evening News. Remember, you can get more local news anytime by listening to the radio stations of East Kentucky Broadcasting. You can follow EKB News and EKB TV on Facebook and Twitter. We're going to leave you tonight with some scenery from around the Russell Fork. Good night. Thanks for watching.